Praise God. Let's look at Romans 16, verse 19 this morning. I have a, something specific in my heart. I believe we should minister today. <clears throat> Romans 16, verse 19 says, For your obedience has become known to all, therefore I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. He says, I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. In the Amplified Classic, it says, For while your loyalty and obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, I would have you well versed and wise as to what is good and innocent and guileless as to what is evil. Innocent and guileless. What does guileless mean? It means innocent. It means naive. That word that's, that means uh, simple, it means unmixed. Naive. Innocent. Concerning what? Concerning evil. Notice in that verse, if you put up the end of it, the Amplified Classic Version, it said, I would have you well-versed and wise in what is good. Well-versed and wise in what is good, but simple, naive, innocent in what is evil. In the NLV, it said, Everyone knows you have obeyed the teaching you received. I am happy with you because of this, but I want you... <coughs> To be wise about good things and pure about sinful things. Pure. See these words? Pure, innocent, naive. What does that bring to mind? Like a baby? Just don't know anything about anything. Innocent. And we're supposed to be that way concerning things that are evil. The CEV says... Um, Let's skip to the end. I want you to understand what is good and not have anything to do with evil. Not have anything to do with it. Not have anything to do with it. In the Phillips, the last part of that says, I want to see you experts in good and not even beginners in evil. Did I make it pretty clear? I want you to be experts in good, but not even on the beginning. You couldn't even say you're a beginner in evil. In evil. You just, you're clueless. Amen? Amen? Amen. Not, 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 well, you know, you got to know some things so you can re relate to people. That's not what the Bible said. We're going to read more verses than this one. No, you may have come across things, and I may have come across things, but we don't seek them out, like evil things. You may have had experiences that, that happened in your life, and yeah, you could relate to somebody because they went through it. That's different than you specifically going and, and having experiences so that, well, i got to have them so I can relate. That's not a good strategy. You can know a lot of stuff is wrong without ever having experienced it yourself. We can just... No, the Bible says I don't want to have anything to do with that. I'm going to be stupid concerning that. I know nothing. See, because people want to be like, well, you know, I want to be worldly. I want to know. That's deception. Let's read another verse. Let me come back to that one. Uh, Philippians 2, verse 14 says, Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or, or labored in vain. In the Amplified Classic, just verse 15, it says that you may show yourselves to be blameless and guileless, innocent and and uncontaminated. To kind of go along with what we just read in the other verse. Innocent, guileless, blameless, uncontaminated. 
children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse, among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars or beacons shining out clearly in the dark world. We're supposed to be very clearly standing out. We're supposed to look different. We're supposed to, we are supposed to look potentially uneducated, naive in evil things like, well, they don't have a clue. Good. In things that are evil. We're supposed to shine and, and be different. We're not supposed to be contaminated. The CEB says, so that you may be blameless and pure, innocent children of God surrounded by people who are crooked and corrupt. Among these people, you should shine like stars in the world. Now, <clears throat> There's a number of things on my heart, so you guys are believing with me to get out what we need to get out in the right order, in the right time, you know, what, what we need to get out here. But this is, the Bible says, you know, between these verses, we'll read some other verses, but we're supposed to be simple concerning evil. We're supposed to be innocent and pure and blameless and uncontaminated and that will stick out in a, in a crooked and perverse generation, spiritually perverted, wicked, corrupt. And we're not even supposed to mess with certain things. Evil. Now there's just a number of things I believe we're going to touch on on, on a, some different parts. But... Um, you know, there's just in the world, and I'm talking about this in relation to, of course, adults, but in children, U.S. parents, or however old they are, and then with ourselves. No matter how old you are, we ought to have this attitude like there are certain things I don't want to have anything to do with. I want to be ignorant of them. Now, this goes against a lot of what um, is in the world now concerning adults and children. Like, well, you got to know reality. You need to know the way real life is. <laughs> read the Bible. You'll know plenty about real life. If you read the Old Testament, you can read stuff in the New Testament too, but there's just a lot of accounts, stories, where the New Testament's a lot of letters. Of course, we have the accounts of Jesus, but you have all these, these stories. You will see drama and intrigue and immorality. And it's okay to read the Bible and see these things. You don't really need to see them in the world to understand that they're there. And you definitely don't need to seek these things out and learn about them. Well, I want to know so I can win somebody. That is a lie. Well, I'll go to the bar so, you know, I just rub shoulders with people in their environment. <laughs> No, you're rubbing shoulders with a lot more than people. There's demons and people that, that are influenced that you're rubbing shoulders with. You don't need to go to certain places. You don't need to, to be around certain things. That's not necessary. People, you know, there was a saying like, goody two shoes. You know, oh, well, you just, oh, you're too pristine. Oh, you're, you can't do that. Well, you just acting like, well, you know, you should be able to handle certain things. See, the, the, the devil is deceptive, and he's sneaky. So he, he, he paints stuff so that you, it makes it look like the wrong thing is good, and the good thing is wrong. Just look at the way he names things in culture. You see this homophobia, implying that you're afraid of something, which is why you believe something, in, instead of you believe the Bible. Not afraid of anything. You know, pro-choice. Implying that it's a good thing instead of that you're murdering helpless, innocent children. 
He names like this all the time. Well, you're just, you know, you're too uptight. You don't, you, you don't really want to know the real world as if it's a good thing to know. Look at children's books. Children, I mean, I should say like, I mean, some of them are children's. Now it's getting crazy. But I'm talking about like, you get into the adolescent area. The books that are available and pushed as something that your children or your adolescents or your youth or your college students should read because, you know, they just need to be exposed to this. It's... You, you read some of this stuff, it's corrupt, it's perverted, it, it, is, it is people, yes, do people deal with these things? Yeah, you, yes, they do. But we don't need to inject them into our kids' minds for no reason. In, in a dramatic fashion where they're reading about it and reading about people that have issues, reading about people that go through heartbreak. Do people go through that in the, in the world? Yes, they do, but watching a drama or reading a drama is just foolish. Like I said, you can read the Bible and see all this kind of drama there. You don't need to write, read somebody else's account that is likely not a Christian and inject their worldview and mindset and how something like that should be handled into your mind, let alone your children's minds. Like there's these quote-unquote classic books that everybody should know, and they're trash. They are flat trash. I don't care who wrote them. I don't care how they've been lauded and esteemed. They're garbage. From a biblical, godly perspective, you guys okay? They're garbage. I don't mind saying it. You look at it and go, these people are messed up in the, you know, the characters, and whoever wrote this and came up with it, you have problems in your mind. We're supposed to be simple concerning evil, not, well, you know, let's see, what, let's see how these people live. Let's see how, if this tragedy happened, how would you deal? You, you don't need your kids reading about how somebody lost, you know, a loved one. That's going to, that gives the devil an inroad to say, that'll happen to you. And they're reading this drama and some ungodly person painting a picture and grief and sorrow. Is there that in the world? Absolutely, but there's a godly way to deal. That's not going to help anybody. You know, people, oh, you just, well, you can't handle the, the reality. This is out here. We just need, we need them to know. That's not going to help them deal with it. What they need to know is what the Word of God says about it. These things exist. Yes, they do. Of course, we see, look at our society. But just going and saying, I'm going to expose myself to it, is going down the wrong path. You know, people talk about rite of passage stories or rite of passage movies or coming of age. What that means is they're getting into immorality usually. And that's just what kids do. You expose your children to that, that paints pictures of this is how, well, that's just the way I feel about so. Oh, I'd like to do that with so-and-so. And, -so. and it's, it's just putting garbage in their minds. Instead of painting a picture of morality and truth and godly living. It just opens the door for Satan to come in and, and give thoughts where there were none. You know, well, i got to be able to relate to my friends. Well, hey, relate to the world. You can relate to the world just by walking in love and showing compassion. You, If you have a common background, like we said earlier, because there were some things in your life that you dealt with and you can relate, okay, the past is past. That doesn't mean everybody needs to go through that and get a taste so that you can really just be a real well-rounded person. You're going to corrupt. You, you, you open your door to being corrupt. And the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible doesn't tell us to do that. The Bible doesn't tell us to needlessly open the door to evil. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27 says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. That's the part I wanted to focus on. 
in context, he's saying be angry, don't sin, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, you can be angry, but don't let it cause you to sin. Those are two different things. You can be, Jesus was angry, but he never sinned. He was furious, but he never sinned. You can be angry, you can experience angry, but you don't have to let it get you off. And then it says, nor give place to the devil. In the Amplified Classic, it says, leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. Don't give him an opportunity. Don't give him an opportunity. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Satan is looking for opportunities. In fact, if you can put that up, we'll come back to it, but uh, right at the end there, all the way down, 1 Peter 5, verse 8, and then we'll come back up to where we were. But near the end, one of the last scriptures, 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Throwing them for a loop here. Good job. It says, be, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That means he can't devour everybody. He wants you to think he can just, not, he can just take anybody out whenever he wants. That's not true. If that's true, why didn't he already take you out? Why aren't we all just gone? Because he can't do it. That's why. He's a liar. He'll try to make it seem like he can just take you out whenever he wants. No, he has to have an opportunity. And are we going to give him one? That's the question. He says, your adversary, the dead devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Resist him steadfast in the faith. faith. Resist him. Don't give him an opportunity. You resist him. Well, what are you resisting? All his stuff. All his junk. All his sin. All his evil. You don't let it get a foothold in your life. You don't mess with it. You don't play with fire. All sin and evil, it's just an opportunity for the devil to just destroy So we read in uh, Ephesians, don't, don't give him an opportunity. Let's go to Ephesians 5, verse 8, back up where we were before. But you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world, or light in the, you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the full... For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Excuse me, expose them. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Don't have any fellowship with them. Don't have any fellowship with them. Don't buddy up to them. Well, you know, I mean, it's not a big deal. It's okay. It says, do not have any fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Verse 12, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Shameful to even talk about it. This is giving, this, these, these, these verses are telling us you leave certain things alone. Like what we started out with, you be naive concerning. People don't, that's hard on your pride. Okay? That you want to, well, you know, somebody might think I just don't know. The Bible tells you not to know. Well, you know, I don't want to seem backwards or naive. To what? The world? Versus God? What, what, who, do we, who do we want the approval of? Because if, you, if you're just going to keep living godly, the world is just getting worse and worse. Their standards, if you look at some of the stuff people wear and say and do and put it up, you know, against standards 100 years ago, uh, it is crazy different. Right? I mean, what people wear, you know, the clothes and everything, you can't, what they wore on the beach, 
you know, it's humorous to us to see old swimsuits, but I mean, it was a lot more modest. Now you're like, <laughs> didn't need to see that. You know, but it's, it's completely different. Well, if you're going to live godly and the, the world just keeps going over and say, well, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay, okay. you're going to look like you're stuck in the decade past at some point. I'm not saying you, don't, you can't be stylish. There's a difference between being stylish and immodest, right? You can be up to date, stylish, just you don't have to be wearing, you know, exposing everything and up to date. There's a difference. There are different styles within fashion. It's okay to, to look good and, and up to date and, and yet still uh, dress respectfully. But, okay, so the, there's just certain things, you know, especially good night with, with teenagers and college students. So just, you know, it's like, what do you know? As if they're inventing things. Like, would well, you know about this or this? I mean, there are things that they come up with different terms and, you know, certain crazy things. But generally speaking, there is nothing new concept-wise that any kid is coming up with. But it's like, do you, you know, you know about this or this? Oh, you don't know what that word means? Oh, you're backwards. <laughs> right? Everybody knows that. Well, you don't, you don't know what this means? Oh, and they'll just, you know, laugh like, oh, well, you should know. They may or may not tell you, but what do they learn what stuff means? Well, you know, we watched it from such and such a show, or we're, we, we know, uh, you know, we're, we're reading certain things, or we're following certain websites, or whatever. I'm not talking about being backwards, not be able to actually discuss, but why, are we, why would we be discussing things that are unspeakable anyway? You can just un excuse that. They don't even know you don't know what it means. You can just be silent. Guys, kids, you don't have to, or young, young people, you don't have to expose everything you do or not don't know. You can just excuse yourself from the conversation and don't hang around with those people. I know it's harder said than done. We get it. All the adults understand to a degree, not, not what you guys are, are dealing with in 2022, but we get the concept and we understand you know, just navigating that whole thing is not easy. But God has a standard, and if you'll side with him, he will vindicate you. Amen. And when people, you know, decades from now are picking up the pieces of their life, and your life is still standing, Amen. his word will prove true. And all the older people, the rest of us are all nodding our heads going, yeah. Because we know the stuff that, you know, was portrayed as, oh, so cool. You're like, you were stupid. Think you're going to last forever and just get into all this junk and not act like there's any consequences. Right? And, and us people that have been around, we need to encourage the younger people. Look, hold the line. Hold the line. You're doing the right thing. You may feel backwards. You may feel like you're not, you're not fitting in. But believe me, the way you're living is going to hold up over the decades of time. You're going to be so thankful that you didn't give in to all that junk or found out about stuff. You're going to realize what, more and more what life's about and what's really important. And you're going to realize all that stuff that people were getting caught up with was just stupidity and ignorance. Talk about ignorance. Ignorance of the way things really are. If you please God, you are way ahead of the crowd. You are so far ahead. Let's look at Ephesians 5 verse 3. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> it says there, But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the, si the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. 
go back and read verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetous, covetousness, let it not even be named among you. Two ways to look at that. You know, it's definitely not named among you as somebody doing it, but it's not even mentioned among you as is fitting for saints, as is fitting for people of God, as is fitting for sons and daughters of the Almighty. Amen. Ought to be pure. I know all the things you read. Simple. You, you understand good and you're wise in truth, but you are simple com concerning these other things. You're like, yeah, I don't know anything about it. don't want to. Because it's not fitting. Verse 4, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which is not fitting. That's not fitting. In the Amplified, verse 3 says, but sexual immorality and all moral impurity, indecent, offensive behavior, or greed, must not even be hinted at among you. Not like, oh, well, we know, wink, wink, this is, this is okay. No. If Jesus were in the room. See, this is not about a right or wrong, just like, ooh, do I get caught and, you know, being backwards or, or um, with it. This is talking about life or death. Satan is trying to look for a foothold, and we have to know, I'm not going to play that game. I'm not going to give you a hook in my flesh to drag me along that way. Amen. And, and he's subtle. He's trying to get, well, you don't want to be backwards. I mean, you want to be cool, right? He's trying to kill you. <laughs> trying to destroy you. Not even to be hinted at among you, if you can put that back up. As it is proper among saints, for as believers, our way of life, whether in public or private, reflects the validity of our faith. Verse 3, but sexual immorality, it says in, in the, King, the New King James, fornication. We're talking, it, it's talking now just as a side thing, it's talking about sex outside of marriage. Fornication, I'm just going to say this on the side as we're going along this, that is not a light thing. The, what, the, the, the standards have gotten broken down over time. You know, we were talking to um, the Kuis who are, are from Samoa, or they live in Samoa, the, the missionaries that we had back in July. And in their culture, there, it's, it's a, there's, there's certain parts of that culture that is very um, godly. And on TV, if somebody is even kissing, it will go black until that's over, like just at all, and then it'll come back up. And people say, well, that's really backwards, but it doesn't embed it in the culture. See, we would think now, I mean, good night, a kiss? <laughs> well, stuff that they throw in, I don't look at a lot. You just see, it's like, what? That is nothing. Because, see, it's a slippery slope. It started, they started showing more and more stuff on TV, more and more stuff, socially acceptable. But here's the thing. Just starting to mess around outside of marriage leads to all kinds of issues, all kinds of problems in, in family structures, children out of wedlock. You talk about the abortion issue. It is about sex outside of marriage and people not wanting to be responsible inside of marriage. That is what it's about. It stems, it's upstream. Because if you're married, see, sex is supposed to be, and we got, we got the kids in the back. We're not going to dive deep, but just touching on this, this is not a light thing that people are like, oh, well, it's okay to show that on TV. It's a slippery slope because the problems, you see so many problems in society, they're loaded that, that are, are, are flashpoints right now. You go back up the chain and just define Sex, the only way it's right is between a man and woman in marriage. Amen. If you do that, abortion basically goes to nil. They try to make it like it's, oh, you know, try to bring up rape and incest. That is such a small fraction, and that is not what the argument's about. Right. It is about abortion on demand, and you don't want to pay for consequences of decisions. 
And if you bring it into a marriage relationship only, now you're talking about do we want to have a child now that you are covenanted together to, to live for the rest of your life? That becomes a background issue. I mean, it, it definitely tempers it a lot. You deal with um, all the family situations that are, are in the world, and we're not con it's not condemnation to anybody, but all the, the marriages and, and remarriages and all that, you, you start whittling a lot of that stuff down. Rape, incest, all that stuff is sex outside of marriage. And then you talk about all the, the perversion. Homosexuality is sex outside of marriage because you can't be married unless you're a male and a female. Legit male and female. Biological. All that stuff. When you talk about transgenderism, I don't care how you start messing with it, you're just basically starting to mix a male, a biological male and a, and, and a biological male or two females or some mutilation of the two. And if you just bring it back to just the sanctity of just sex inside a marriage, then it eradicates a lot of the things, this stuff that people don't even want to you know, go toward bestiality and everything, which don't, don't, don't make any mistake. That stuff will be pushed at some point. It, it just goes back to a man and a woman. And you take all that stuff out. All these things, people are like, well, it, it just is more and more in society. Well, where does it just go back upstream? Well, it's okay if people mess around. It's not that big a deal outside of marriage. It leads teenage pregnancy, all this stuff. What if kids, well, they need to know. What if they didn't know a lot of stuff and they just were taught in the privacy of their own home or when they were ready how much, and they were, it wasn't on TV all the time and it wasn't portrayed to them and they didn't hear about it all the time. Yes, they have hormones, but if the society was more um, you know, conservative at, at one time like it, what did things happen? Yes, but it wasn't like it's okay out in the open to do whatever. That is where that leads. People finding out about stuff early, looking into it, that they become, what in their eyes, wise about certain things. And then they want to try stuff, and then it just keeps going. And then, but then you look, and people are like, well, here's your summer reading. <laughs> and you look in the book, and it's showing all this stuff. It's like, where, gosh, we just don't know where they get all these ideas because it's being given to them. Which we're going back when we talk about being simple concerning evil. What if it just wasn't given to them? Do we think that would make any difference in how people behave? If they weren't told how to use every kind of drug in class and what the good way and bad way and what could do, do you think people would maybe not use them as much? Well, let's just inform them on everything. That arouses all kinds of curiosity. No, the Bible just says there's some things you don't need to dive into. You don't need to get into all this stuff. Let's read this, uh, this passage in the, the NLT. It says, let there be no sexual morality, impurity, greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes, these are not for you. Did you hear me? They're not for you. It's like, no, that's not for me. Is it there? Yes. As an adult, can you not? Yeah, it's there. We don't need to talk about it. We don't need to dive into it. Yes, as you, you can know that there's certain things there that's a lot different, and you can talk to your kids if it's needed. What's this? Well, this is this. You don't need to touch that. This is all you need to know. You can make those decisions with your, your partner, your, your spouse, and the Holy Spirit, and guide them through. But you don't need to dive in. Yeah, here's a book on it. Go, go find out all about the stuff, and then we'll have a big discussion. That's not going to help. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. 
For the uh, anger of God will fall on all those who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do. Now on the side, is he talking to Christians or not? He is. Look at this in the Amplified, verse 6. Let no one delude and deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments for these sins. Has that gone on? Oh, yeah. You know, it's okay. You know, just wherever you are, it's good. No. We ought to, we ought to be pushing away and say, no, that, raise the bar, raise the standard. No, it shouldn't even be named among you. No, we're not going to talk about that at all. Have people walk through stuff. Of course, bring them up. No condemnation, bring them forward, but don't make excuses like it's just okay. It's okay to just stay there. It's okay, you know, the grace of God's sufficient. That is actually enabling the devil to lord it over people. It enables it to be like, oh, it's okay to come in. It's okay to do whatever. But then, you know, God still loves you. How about God loves you? Stay away from that as, as far away from it as you possibly can. It says, let no one delude and deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments for these sins. For through these things, the wrath of God comes upon the, upon the sons of rebellion and disobedience. There's just things. We, just, we don't want to expose ourselves. We don't want to get in the middle of it. And we certainly don't want our children to be exposed to things. And you guys... Uh, you know, mentioned this before, of course we understand uh, what's going on in the society, that, that there is a reason why there is a push to share things of sexual nature to young children and get them thinking about these things because it opens the door for Satan to work in their life and to confuse them. There are so many young children kids in, in middle school and high school that think they're homosexual, transgender, or whatever because it's so pervasive in culture. It's not because people just came out of the closet and they were always there. Historically, that is just not the case. But you get it embedded in kids' minds, and they're, they're, they're uh, malleable, and they're, they're very persuadable, and they're emotional, and they're looking for an out and a way to stop pain, and then they start going down paths, and it just gives Satan a playground to mess with their head. And instead of parents saying, you are a boy, you're born a boy, you're a male, and get rid of those thoughts, they're actually taught, well, you never know, and to entertain the thoughts. Same thing with girls, and when you're talking about young kids, young um, you know, even elementary school kids trying to introduce it, it is just an avenue for people to be introduced to things they never should think about, and then it just it gives a way for Satan to influence and destroy lives. Now, one thing I want to touch on uh, in relation to this, because I, I do, I, we're talking about children and just talking about the view. We want to give ammo to young, young people, young adults, uh, high schoolers, college-age students, uh, middle schoolers, of course younger than that if need be, parents to stand strong and go, no, we don't need to have this stuff even exposed to my kid. We know the, the radical stuff, of course, but I'm talking about even the more subtle stuff. Well, you know, all their friends are kind of doing that. That's, I mean, it's, it's not that bad that there's a slippery slope there. Okay, kids can get a hold of all kinds of junk on their phone. It is, it is just there. You know, it, it is so easy to get a hold of stuff. And so to just to hold the line and say no. Okay, I'll go ahead and say it, you know, but, but pornography is so easy to get a hold. Even when I was growing up, you had to know somebody that had that stuff or when you went to go and, and to 7-Eleven or something, there's a clerk there, the magazines are behind you, there's a barrier. Now you can just go on the internet and see whatever you want to see like that. That is an unfair fight for an adolescent kid and the internet. Unless there's a barrier. Unless there's a parent. 
take your phone away, their phone at night, away at night and just keep it with you. Amen. 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 So we have to just, we have to know, no, there's a line, no, and that's way over here. People say, well, that's that, no, but where does it start? It starts with different things that just as a slippery slope. Okay, you don't want to go down pathways be, that you instill in your children. It is right to be holy. It is right. You stand, don't be bashful about it. If people can't understand it, that's their problem. It's not your problem. Before God Almighty, you're doing the right thing. Now, let me touch on this. because I want to touch on this as well as far as kids. We're in October, you know, which means in this area, all October is Halloween celebration month and all the junk that goes with that, and I'm not going to talk in depth about that for the sake of time, but we talked last year. Um, there was a, a one, we, we, we spent um, just a Sunday talking about the reality of the devil and demons and magic. If you didn't hear that last year, it was, on, it was actually on October 31st last year. Just go find it. Um, I don't remember if that's on YouTube. I, no, I think it was on YouTube, but it's definitely on our website. Go find that, and we talk about it in depth. Because that's another thing that we need to understand. We don't need to be knowledgeable and dive into these things that are being pushed in our society about magic and the demonic and psychic and all that. It, it, is, it is evil. And it's, being try, it's trying to be pushed on your children. And it's in culture. And it's in movies. And you don't need to know about it. You need to say, no, we're not messing with that stuff. Oh, well, what, you can't handle it? It's a movie. What, you scared? No, I'm too smart to give Satan a foothold to know about the way he works. I don't need to understand that stuff. I can understand it's there, but I can be bold and say, no, not going to watch that movie. Oh, you're acting like you're talking about the occult and talking about spells and everything. What, you're afraid of magic? No, I'm too, I know there's a spiritual realm. I'm not going to open up the door to my eye, my eye gate and my ear gate and put that junk. I don't care how popular it is, culture-wise. All the movies and so, well, do you know this is a popular series? <laughs> okay, look at the world around you. You want to go the same way. Just let me read you a few verses. Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. <clears throat> like I said, we went to more in depth and talked about this. Go, go look up that message, the reality of the devil, demons, and magic. Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. Because there are some popular series and popular movies that are basically ma magic and all this stuff. And people are ignorant, just opening the door to this stuff, and then they're letting their kids watch it. And their kids are getting, and there is a supernatural. There is power here. But there is a much higher power. The power of God completely trumps any of this nonsense. And you don't need to be afraid of it, but you don't open the door. I mean, you don't need to be afraid of all the people outside, you know, g going down the street, just driving by in cars, but you don't open your door and just let whoever wants to come in either. And you definitely don't go and solicit them and bring them in, bad people, you know, and come, and come and sit in my couch and then just wonder if something bad happens. That's what people are doing when they're turning on these shows and allowing uh, that stuff to go into us and especially our children. Verse 12, for, I, I'm, I'm finishing up. I know we're going a little, we had a different service, okay? So I'm wrapping up, but I know we're coming up into this time. We're not overly concerned about it, but I'm just letting you know. Uh, you guys are giving me a little bit of this time back since we, since we were a little late. Verse 12 says, for all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Just read a couple more. The, uh, Isaiah 8 verse 19 
says, someone may say to you, let's ask the mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead. With their whisperings and mutterings, they will tell us what to do. But shouldn't people ask God for guidance? Should the living seek the guidance from the dead? Look to God's instructions and teachings. But people who contradict his word are completely in the dark. Ezekiel 13, 17 says, Likewise, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own heart, prophesy against them and say, Thus says the Lord, Woe to the women who sew magic charms on their sleeves and make veils for the heads of people of every height to hunt souls. Talking about, you know, charms and, and um, the different approaches that people that are in magic do. It's saying, don't mess with it. Acts 19, verse 11 says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the, the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also there were seven sons of Sceva, Jewish chief priests, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? In other words, you're not born again. You have no authority. Who are you saying this? Verse 16, Then the, men, the man in whom the evil spirit uh, was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so they fled out of the house naked and wounded. See, this is real. This became known both to the Jews and all Greeks who dwell in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Notice this, and many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of, us all, the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Amen. So it's talking about supernatural stuff going on, people trying to cast out demons like somebody else, just acting like it's hocus pocus, and that not going well at all. And then, then people saw the reality of it, and they come confessing what they've done wrong. And notice, they got rid of all the books and things that would tell them about magic and these type of things. They got rid of it, they burned it, and they said they don't have, want to have anything to do with it. And notice, the word of God grew, or it says the word of God grew mightily and prevailed because people were turning back and saying, we don't want to have anything to do with it. Well, you know, they didn't just keep it and go, well, I knew something about that. I'll just keep it. Maybe I can relate to somebody that's into that too. And, you know, it's, it won't ha do any harm if it's on my bookshelf. They burned it. And if we have any junk that is along any of these lines or any kind of evil of any way, we need to get it out and just don't have it in your house just don't look at it. You don't want to open the door. You want to be just pure in those things. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, we'll close with this. James 4, 7 says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It says, resist the devil. But first it says, submit to God. Submit to what is good, be experts in what is good, be experts in what is holy, but as far as all the evil, you shun it, you don't give any place to it, you don't give, uh, you don't, you don't give it any time, you don't give it any attention, you may seem pure and simple and innocent, but you stay away from it, and then when you stand in the authority of, of God and tell the devil, go, and you resist him, he will flee. Amen. Amen. God's good. God is good, and he wants our best. And why would you want any of that junk in, it, in your house or around your life anyway? It's like, well, a little, little bit of this isn't going to matter. That's like taking poison and having a little bit of it in your food and being like, well, it won't hurt. Nobody wants that. So we don't do it with, with spiritual things. Amen? Amen. Praise God.